Good evening, everyone. Welcome to America's Third Party. Uh, we are in the midst of a Freedom Friday. And uh, I want to reiterate that the new tie for Freedom Friday is the presidential tie here. It's a museum artifact I picked up at a museum at one of the president's homes this past summer. I went to D.C. and then Charlottesville and visited a few houses of former presidents. Had a good time. We've got things happening uh, throughout the country that are just not making any sense. We've got a president that is turning around claiming to be the chosen one. I am the chosen one. I am the chosen one. I am the chosen one. And no one thinks he's the chosen one because no one really chose him. He's a man who didn't win the, uh, the popular vote. A man that used Russian interference to win the election and knowingly did it because according to Mueller, he knew about Russia helping him prior and didn't even tell the FBI. He was being blackmailed by Russia during the past two years over sex tapes, according to Robert Mueller, and the media is not doing anything with that. Cool Rock has a complete screen rolling out. CoolRock.com is playing live. I can watch it right now on our show in real time. So you can catch us at CoolRock.com, C-O-O-L-R-O-C-K.com. We have one viewer that thinks that Trump is the Antichrist. Wow. Okay. Thank you, viewer. Whew. Got a lot of things happening. Got to piece it all together. I'm going to show you a couple of news stories that will bring you right away. The partner uh, in the Cook Enterprises, David Cook, the billionaire who developed the coking process, I should say, David Koch, has died at age 79. He fueled the right-wing movement. He was a philanthropist. He was worth about $43 billion. And he's passed away, leaving the trust to his brother, who will go on in his steed. So Charles Koch announced the death of his brother, David Koch. He said he'd been battling cancer for 27 years, prostate cancer. Yeah, and he was given a grim prognosis for a few years to live, but he lived 27 years. So it's more than likely he succumbed to bone cancer and prostate cancer usually does that. You can battle it with all kinds of new medicines, but eventually it gets you, and usually the cause of death is pneumonia because fighting it will weaken your immune system and you end up dying. The reason why I know that is my father died of the same thing David Koch died of. He was given one year to live in 1989 and he lived to be uh, 77 years, 2001. So he got 12 years extra with modern medicine. This guy got 27 years out of modern medicine, so that's good. And another major death of a figure in American history, John H. MacArthur, the former dean of Harvard Business School, died at 85. Yeah, he passed away. Uh, he was known throughout the, uh, the Harvard community as a real true contributor to HBS, Harvard Business School, and his energy and leadership kept them at the forefront of business education and laid the foundation of intellectual growth and development on which the school continues to build today. You mean like hiring Elizabeth Warren, giving her a free education because she's a Cherokee Indian, and then hiring her as a minority professor? <laughs> okay, let's move on. Yeah, Harvard Business, Harvard itself, yeah, allowing her to cheat on her, on her Cherokee Indian status. And nobody in the Democratic Party wants to deal with that. Okay, we got too much happening at once. Boris uh, Johnson is sticking his foot on a table in a big effort to push Brexit across Europe. Here it is. The big bold move by Boris Johnson, the new Prime Minister of England. Watch this. BBC News. And he, there he is, big, whoa, oh, that's that's major. For an Englishman to put his foot on the table, oh, that's news, oh yes, oh, give me a break. 
Okay. And uh, Rashida Tlaib and Elian Omar botched Israel trip was sponsored by a terror-linked organization. You know, this is kind of like scapegoat time at the OK Corral. These women are scapegoats. For one, Ilhan Omar shouldn't even be in Congress because she married her brother, her homosexual brother, to give him U.S. citizenship. That would automatically remove her from office and send her back home to her home country of what, Somalia? I'm not sure where her originally she came from. But in any event, they're picking on these two uh, immigrants for no reason, acting like they're linked to a terror-linked organization. They just wanted to go to Israel and, and complain. I mean, they have that right. But Trump didn't want to give them that right. In fact, he told Netanyahu to keep them out. They canceled their trip to Israel, but it was sponsored by a Palestinian-based organization whose members have expressed sympathy for terrorist activities. Wow. Well, all I can say is labeling these people terrorists or sympathizers of terrorists is just a scapegoat move. We really have to address the real issue of why Israel and the powerful AIPAC lobby has control over our government. That's the real issue. David, you don't read the facts? What are they? I get it. They're pro-Palestinian group, but you don't see the rhetoric here? They're keeping these women in play as scapegoats. It's a, it's a higher level of, of, of activity going on here. These women aren't even that smart. No, we saw Representative Omar. Oh, hold on talk openly about uh, Israel's money that they get. Check this out. So to peace. In fact, they do the opposite. They maintain the occupation and prevent a solution to the conflict. Fortunately, we in the United States have a constructive role to play. We give Israel more than $3 million in aid every year. Okay, $3 million in aid every year. Okay, then why is it the wiki says, since 1985, the United States has provided nearly $3 billion in grants to Israel per year. Yet she says $3 million. The woman's an imbecile. role to play. We give Israel more than three million dollars in aid every year. <laughs> well, I guess three billion is more than three million, but the woman can't even get her facts straight, people. They're keeping this imbecile in power because she's good to, to be a scapegoat for all the Muslims that are out there. Yeah, and we being the U.S. She doesn't even have the numbers right, people. She's completely in the dark. And frankly, I'm not going to pick on her. She's an idiot. Well, she cheated to get into America. Her brother cheated to get into America. Trump won't prosecute her. So why don't you people who support Trump figure out why Trump won't prosecute her? That's the real issue here. Okay. Thank you for my, your support. Appreciate it. Yeah, really. I'm not sure. Is Trump going to sell Washington to Greenland as or to Denmark as part of a payback for Greenland? I mean, is he going to trade Minnesota for Greenland or how is he going to work this? This is kind of screwed up. U.S. Democratic hopeful Joe Biden invokes 68 ask people to imagine Obama's assassination. Wow. What is he thinking? Or is he thinking? He took a series of unusual rhetorical detours at the end of a town hall style campaign event, nominally dedicated to healthcare, speculating about how a political assassination of Barack Obama might have affected the country in 08, and recalling that he was accused of being gay because of his support of women's rights in the 70s. Well, really, there's nothing more to say about Joe Biden. He had three aneurysms prior to becoming our vice president and brain surgery. And I don't think he's safe at his age to be our president. Plus, he likes to touch women and girls and little girls. 
Well, they're keeping them in play because they like Omar. That's right. They like her and they like Tliab. Uh, anybody who can give them somebody to pick on. That's why they're in play. That the only reason why they're in play. It's called scapegoatism. And I'm not going to make a big deal about it because, frankly, I agree with them about APAC, but they don't make a big deal about APAC. They're not pushing it enough. They're, they're hating on Israel. Last thing we need to do is hate on Israel. We're concerned about Israel's backers supporting now a new world order. Zionists, if you will. That's my biggest concern. Well, I, I did know that we were white. I thought we were 57% white in America, but whatever. It doesn't matter to me. White, black, Hispanic, Asian, Eskimo, I don't care. It's the church of scapegoatism, yeah, in a way, because they're just picking these people as dumb idiots to make fun of. They don't represent the, the, the intellectual elite in their, their particular categories. Dave has what? You just reported? I have nothing. What are you talking about? Dave has what? Your attention? Okay. We did establish earlier that these types of directed energy weapons could be used against uh, the anything, ourselves. They could burn houses. These are the pictures off the Paradise Fires that were uh, burned in California, where uh, they say 85 people died, but really more like 8,500 people died. And nobody's bothering to even check to see a lot of these people because they were all old people living in their retirement homes. They don't even have relatives. So they just torch the region. Well, now we're seeing fires in the Amazon that could very well belie a deeper problem. But then we get an article from uh, Max that says, it's AccuWeather says these fires are nothing abnormal. Yeah, down here, these fires you think are happening in Brazil and, and the Amazon forest are terrible, but apparently this is the kind of normal fire activity they've seen for years. So, yeah. It says the Amazon region isn't even seeing above normal fire activity this year. How about that? What date is this? That's important. That's August 23rd, 2019. So yeah, I, I guess the Amazon rainforests are being falsely uh, represented in the media. Now, some really sad news. I, I did not talk about this yet, except in our pre-show. But a uh, wonderful young lady, Erin Edwards, has been found dead. She was a journalist student and film and television student and study of African-American studies. Erin Edwards was found dead. She was in her junior year, 20 years old, at Boston University. She was found dead. Her... Her body was found with her 24-year-old brother, Christopher, and their mother. And authorities are claiming this is a murder-suicide. And I don't buy it. If she was a journalist in uh, according, working in the Atlanta area, this is exactly the same MO of uh, a very famous woman named Nancy Schaefer, who was also uh, working on it, investigating the Atlanta region. If this woman was onto something really good, as a journalist, and she seemed to be a legitimate young journalist who was trying to fight for what's right, she may have fallen into the same uh, situation that Nancy Schaefer fell in in 19 or 2010. Her death is very much a mystery. She and her husband, they called a murder-suicide. When in fact, this woman, Senator Nancy Schaefer, was exposing the Atlanta Child Protective Services and their involvement in sex trafficking of children. She exposed family court and she was gunned down and assassinated and they called out a murder-suicide in the Atlanta region. So now we've got two potential suicides, murder-suicides in the Atlanta region. Mothers don't kill their daughter and their son and take their, their own life. That's a highly unlikely reason for that death. Very suspicious. Sarah's here, welcome. Sarah's here, let me move down my, get rid of my directed energy weapon images. There we go. You don't want those in the picture. Okay, she's in. And she's going to give me a little time away so I can go feed the fish and take care of a few things. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hi, Sausage. And hi, David. Thank you. Thank you. I was just watching that Mr. Rogers documentary again. 
It's very inspiring. It's you. I like not the way you comb your hair or all the things you say in the show. It's you. Just you. I like something like that. I do. I really do admire Mr. Rogers and I hope to be like him. Hello, maxed out credit. Hello, Washington, D.C. Clip to chat. Uh, sausage, thanks for saying hi. Mad Dog's Backyard. Clip to chat. I, uh... Yeah, I really, I really do, do like Mr. Rogers. I think if we were like him, it would be, the world would be better. Yeah, with Netflix and the Amazon Prime, you can just wa watch just about anything. And then with the Amazon Prime, you can subscribe to other things. Oh, thank you, Dr. Meow. I will check my mail. Okay, Senator. Thank you. I would like you even if you were. But I'm glad that you're revealing your feelings to me. I am feeling well for uh, Friday today. Uh, you're funny, ghost. Final dream. Yes, I did hear about the movie star with Mr. Rogers starring Tom Hanks. I'm not sure I'm going to be watching it. Oh, it's for all of us, including Amber. Good. Cool. Uh, September 5th, the students start back, but I am starting, I have, pl I have, um, what's the word? I have, um, I have training next week, so yes, on equity and be liking everyone yes and then on uh i have a day on that and then another day on math i love math yeah there were rumors but they were that's not true cliff to chat not true yeah they do start they do start on a Thursday this year. Hello, William. Okay, Senator. Thank you. You never heard of Mr. Rogers? Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood is a show. I, I suggest you watch it. Yeah, it was a rumor. Hello. Hi, Sausage. How are you? Yeah, we start the first two days like so that we can do getting to know you kind of things with the students and things like that. Yes, but I'm starting to get up early, even though school didn't start. This is the way you like planting trees. Okay, wait a moment. Planting trees using seed bombs. <laughs> That's hilarious. Aerial reforestation to foster new growth on damaged land. That's actually kind of a good idea. I do like that idea. I, I did see this show documentary. I think it was on HBO about how... Um, how the man who stopped the desert that's what it was called it, that was really good and it works because it sends the seed deep enough into the soil do they send it with um some soil and nutrients to get it going 
even in college you have to introduce yourself on the first day you don't you hated introducing yourself so I shouldn't force kids to introduce themselves you're up at 4 25 in the morning you're gonna give us a wake-up call no thank you Yes, I have heard. David has told me he watched the movie somewhere in time, and I still haven't done that. That's interesting, yeah. yeah it's about Keanu, no, what's his name? The actor who plays Superman was in that Somewhere in Time movie. It's about, it's a romance based on time travel or something. I know, David said I would really like it. Christopher Reeves, yes. I'll look for it. I wonder, I thought I saw it on Amazon. I kind of, I like those kinds of movies, like The Lake House. I like that one. And there was another one called Sliding Doors. So I like time travel love movies. There was another one which was like Upside Down or something like that. Where a guy traveled. <laughs> it was like, there's a skyline, I guess. And this, these people were like standing up and then there's another town up there that was like standing down and town side up i don't remember what it was called but it was a cool movie you saw it somewhere in time 20 years ago it was still good it stayed with you i don't know 804 if ginsburg is how ginsburg is doing Can you make it musical? Probably not. Source Code and Looper. Ooh, okay. Two other time traveling type movies. Okay. Looper. Uh, yes, I've planted many ideas in the garden of my mind. Oh, wait. I didn't want to say no. I wanted to say yes. I'll get rid of this. Why not? Yeah. I have a yes button. Yes. And I have a no button. No! Looper's a good movie. It has good actors. Okay. Good to know. She's being treated for a pancreatic tumor. It's no. Can you re read there? It's no. Treated definitively. She was 86. She had a bile duct stent placed. She tolerated treatment well. There's no evidence of disease elsewhere in the body.
geothermal energy built in your backyard? I've heard of something like this. No, I didn't. Well, I said I like you just the way you are. Am I the best David can do? Maybe. 20-year-old former NBC intern died in a murder-suicide. They said her energy was contagious. Why are they separated, Brotherhood of Brothers? Absolutely. Why do you lie your dogs in your kitchen? <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. Yeah, it's really cool. There's a feature. Tree planting turns Kenya's arid lands into an oasis of life. It's very cool. Yeah, that's from that documentary I was talking about. Planted trees on the farm. Uh, half acre land finally built a house on the land does not regret as the trees have made his home a cool place amid the worsening weather pattern in arid areas due to climate change he just kept planting trees oh that's cool That's very good. Huh. Oh, my pumpkins are doing really well. I went and visited them today. And they're like this big right now. They're they're yellowish, not a deep orange like pumpkin. I usually expect pumpkins to be an orange color. There's about seven of them. And I'm just letting them grow. And then I was gonna, I was like, oh, this is a worm bin. Well, they, they are on an automated irrigation system. So they're getting plenty of water. Um, so yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah. True tech walla. Okay. We are selling. Yes. Oh, yes. Happy birthday, Mad Dog. Yes, actually, I didn't have my phone, but my dad did, and he took pictures of my pumpkins. No, I don't think we're going to end up buying any countries. We can't afford to. Is it John McCain's birthday? I don't know. Oh yes, Mad Dog's backyard is not the same as Mad Dog. I think that's the same as Antique. Ooh, yeah, that's not good. Drinking 
getting drunk and too much, yeah. Probably not good. Oh well. Oh, the 29th. Close. Ethiopia planted 350 million trees in 12 hours? That's a lot of people planting trees. Man. I don't have that dry Fidel. Maybe David does. Yeah, I that's yeah. I don't drink or do any drugs cuz I don't like to be out of control. I think you're just getting that sense from this show. Have you ever been so mad you wanted to bite and you can reach inside yourself and stop yourself and you're in control of yourself, you can stop it. Mr. Rogers was so good with songs, little songs for kids. Because you know what's right. He always had a, a message. Well, I read all of Laura Ingalls Wilder's books when I was a kid. Oh, did they do that? Uh... Yes, we should get rid of mosquitoes. That's cool. They planted 350 million trees in Ethiopia in 12 hours. Now they just need to water them. Well, Fidel, I will bring peace. Anything that you don't put energy into will end in entropy. I am the water. I wash away all the anger. Oh, thanks to Hoxlammer. Oh, yes, you can see the Vaughn chat. Good. And you're like, oh, gee, thankfully I'm not in there. Yeah, I don't know what happened to Rex. Yeah, I don't know what happened to a ministry. All right. Oh, you have to work tomorrow.
right. And I'll still be teaching, reaching for peace. I hope. Helping, helping with compost. Your clients? Who are your... What do you do for your clients? Jumping worms. They, they're an invasive species in Illinois. Chicago jumping worms. Jumping worms. They're pretty much everywhere. Wow. Jumping Illinois, worms. Chicago, That's weird. Illinois. Are they in beds or like bed bugs or... Jumping worms. I've never heard of those. The jumping worms. What are what do they do? Jumping worms. Oh, there they go. We'll find oh, out. Big wow. They're recognizable by their white or light colored color or clitellium, as well as by their jumping or thrashing behavior. They're known as crazy worms or Alabama jumpers or snake worms. And they're underfoot when you walk through the park. They show up when you're gardening. Hmm. Huh. So what happens? Do they attack you, these jumping worms? Like a small snake. We, we get calls from some people who think they've seen small snakes. Wow. Wow. They're energetic feeders. Yeah. Well, Sarah, you're a big worm uh, supporter. You, you support the worming industry, right? The I, I like composting. I think they do a good job. The... Uh, Regulars, the red regulars are pretty good. Not all earthworms are created equal when it comes to helping soil and gardens. One guy studies worms at the University of Wisconsin, Brad Herrick. There are definitely worms that are beneficial for gardens and have been around a long time, but the difference is the beneficial ones are the ones that work vertically in the soil, creating more pore spaces and mixing the soil. Jumping worms, conversely, like to hang around in the upper layer or even the top of the soil. They lurk in leaves, mulch, in the top layer of organic matter like a cruise ship passengers at the midnight buffet eating and eating and eating. But they don't go down. They don't help mix the soil. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And by the way, uh, if you're, you want to start your victory garden, probably a good time to start your uh, seedlings would be uh, February. January in some areas. Yeah. We'd have to wow. get our tomatoes going in, in February, I think. We want to have full grown tomato plants by, by August. Well, that's impressive. Thanks for telling us about that. Wow. That's interesting. Okay. I'm going to let Diva take back over the show. I'm going to take over. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. I had a, a nice piece of pizza. Thank you very much. Yeah. And, uh, and we're on to the next thing. You plant in the end of May. So you start in April. Planting, yes, but not seedlings. You, you got to get those little seedlings growing in greenhouses in February at least. Good evening. Hello. Earlier, I uh, announced uh, in our pre-show that we thought that someone was a transgender. Well, it turns out that person is not a transgender, and he's been attacked in the show. That person is the hog slammer who's in our show right now, and he called me and said he's not into transgenders. 
Yeah, I had implied earlier that somebody had been into transgenders. He's not into them. And I want to apologize to Hog Slammer. There you are. He's not into transgenders. He never has been. Somebody had trolled his account for a while and had come on the show at one point and done some weird stuff with his, uh, his account, and he got that straightened out. Thank you for clarifying that and calling me on that. He called our, our number, 707-YOUR-ATP, and got me on the phone right away. So we are accessible, you know, 707-YOUR-ATP is always available. People don't have to, you know, troll us. They could actually call us like Hogslimer did. Yeah. He's a good man with a bad back, and he's it, no reason to make uh, statements about him like that. Right. I don't have a belly button ring. Nope. No, Brooke Shields and I did not date in the 1980s. Uh, I know that her good friend, Kiefer Sutherland, is a... Uh, is suffered a fall from a, a staircase and Brooke Shields as you recall was talking to Kiefer Sutherland the day that he was uh, he was a rep he was charged with hitting a, a journalist we're talking about a couple of years ago and they're close friends I guess uh, she's age 54 I did not date Brooke Shields back in the day in her youth she was a, a very uh, attractive girl no question about it but she was my youth my youth she's much younger than me uh, i'm 59 so she's five years younger than me but yeah so uh but i understand that uh Kiefer sutherland is uh, really been hurt so hopefully he'll get better he fell down a staircase i think she's five years younger than me yeah and uh, I guess he'll be doing very well as soon as he rests up. I think he should stay away from any drinking, though, you know. What happened to U.S.-based Epstein? Uh, I don't believe he is dead. No, I believe Epstein's alive. And because he's intelligence, we heard from former Labor Secretary Acosta that he was told to back off on that earlier charge. That's why he only gave him 13 months because they said that Epstein was in the intelligence community. So we have to assume that Jeffrey Epstein was pulled out because they want to use him some more to trap politicians and blackmail them. Well, apparently our country hasn't been running oven by the people for a long time. They've been running oven by the lobbyists and the, and the blackmailers. <laughs> they should write that into the law now. America, oven by the blackmailers and the lobbyists. But as you can see, that's not Jeffrey Epstein. No, that's not even his nose. I mean, the nose knows. You can just see the nose is not his nose. It's got a hook in it. And as you can see, Jeffrey Epstein's nose is not hooked. Running up their noses together, you can see the big differences in their noses, see? So obviously Jeffrey Epstein's not dead. Rumor says the USA directly started the Hong Kong protest, well, would put more tariffs on China at the same time. We've never been so close to a, an open war with China, and Trump, I understand, is upping the ante. We just covered this in the news. He's upping the ante on the whole thing. It's uh, He's taking it up to a 30% hike, I guess. This is in the news right now. Let me bring it in. Bringing in the news, bringing in the news, we shall go rejoicing, bringing in the news. Now he's threatening a 30% tariff. Oh, escalating trade war. Oh, we could easily win a trade war. That's not even a new picture. He's not allowed to put old pictures out like that. That's five years ago. Yeah, and then the... Full-on trade war, Trump jacks up tariffs on 550 billion in Chinese goods and blasts unfair response. U.S. President Donald Trump has announced yet another major hike of existing and future tariffs on some 550 billion dollars in Chinese goods. 
criticizing Beijing's attempt to offset the losses as unfair and politically motivated. And now we understand, you know, they're they're claiming they the protester may be coming out of the U.S. government. Wow. Very interesting. I'd like to hear the truth about that. Thank you. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you for everyone saying I have nice hair. It was designed off of the the back of a a yellow-backed goose. This whole thing is a CIA operate. Well, you mean Jeffrey Epstein being fake death and then getting him out back into play, and then the Hong Kong attack and the protests. Yeah, you're right. That would be the CIA in both instances if they indeed were involved. Dave, was Trump an idiot for asking Denmark to give us Greenland? Well, as you recall, he didn't ask that to give. He said, could we buy Greenland? Big difference. No, he was completely, he invited himself on a trip to Denmark. And then he said, I'm, I'm not, they, they told me I can't come. Well, you invited yourself. You didn't even ask them if you could come. He invited himself and then he says, they didn't let him come. But he came many times, many women. Stormy Daniels. She claims she has some of his cum on his dress, on her dress. Oh, I'm sorry. Change the subject. Have you heard of Hillary Kelly? Uh, no, no. That the the Koch brother died. David Koch died of natural causes, prostate cancer. He had 27 years above his prognosis for death. No, unlikely that was a Clinton involved thing. Yeah. Don't blame the Clintons for everything. Just the ones that they really are involved in. Well, I don't know, but, but Stormy Daniels says she has some of Donald Trump's semen on her dress. She has, she said she had it in a lockbox somewhere. Yeah. Amazon's going down. Major Chinese state banks might freeze their assets. They're losing face and this is going bad and getting ugly. You know, I agree. It, China has a reason to be pissed off at Trump for imposing economic sanctions against Iran. I never would have done it. You remember I said I wouldn't sign the treaty with Iran and Trump copied that. But I also would never reimpose the kind of economic sanctions he did. And that's what led us to this problem with China. All of this can be remedied assuming we get a good front man to deal with it. And that would be me. A way of calming down the Chinese and understanding that we're, our goal is not to destroy their economy, nor ours. And we do have collateral interests, especially the environment, and we need to be a little softer. And I'm even willing to drop the tariff on solar panels from 31% down to maybe 25% as a starting point and eliminate all of the tariffs on steel and aluminum that Trump has imposed. So I think a lot of things need to be moving in the right direction with China. They know that we can buy other things, uh, things from other Asian nations. They know that we can access many things from other na Asian nations. So they know that we have that ability. So we don't have to necessarily trade with China. And China doesn't necessarily have to trade with us, but it doesn't make for good future relations if we go back to pre-Mao Zedong days. Or I should say pre-Richard Nixon Mao Zedong days. Because re remember Richard Nixon, the one big thing he did was my fellow Americans, I want to make this perfectly clear. We're going to restore relations with China. So we'll do it again. We did it then. We'll do it again. We'll bring back Nixon. And if that doesn't work, we'll go back to Ronald Reagan and go, Well, I would like to talk to Xi Jinping directly. If it would be the right thing, I'll ask my friend Don Reagan if I'm allowed to do that. U.S. versus China. It's big. I don't know. It does look like there's a Mossad stamp on the 9-11 attack. I will agree. I'll give you that. And since we still haven't captured the people that did do the attack, I mean, they're not even looking for those Saudi Arabians, then we have to assume it's an inside job and we have a deeper investigation to look into. So not only do we have the Russian investigation and Donald Trump's obstruction, but the Clinton's involvement with Russia, the Clinton's involvement rigging the Benghazi situation, the Clinton's involvement in the Haitian money grab of 5.4 billion, which the people never got. We've also got all these other spin-offs, one after the other. Corruption within the ranks of the CIA, within the ranks of the FBI, like Schrock, 
And Devin Nunes is doing a good job of looking into the Democrats' involvement in, in that, that part of the deal. But we've got all these other investigations. This goes on and on. The layers of corruption in this country are mind-blowing. Not to mention Podesta, Alephantis, Pizzagate, Pedogate, you name it. The list goes on and on and on. The corruption is just unbelievable. If we were standing on a mountain of corruption, it would be Mount uh, Screw Us Up, Screw Us Over. There, there you go, Mount Screw Us Over. I'm standing here on Mount Screw Us Over, and we are surrounded by corrupt people. I know personally Chinese elites who are starting to move in their assets to Russia. Gold-based standard. We have a gold-based standard too. We do. We sell gold in America. Didn't you realize that Comex takes investors like even China? Why wouldn't China just buy a paper gold from Comex, the New York Mercantile? I mean, come on. We can still trade with China. This does not have to go down. Donald, if you're listening, stop the trade war with China. Hurry, hurry, stop it. And U.S. is saying that China is blocking trillions in oil and gas and they're going to send the Navy for Asian drills. Boy, Trump's only response is to send the Navy. How ridiculous. No diplomacy out of this guy. Trump is basically a child dressed into a man's pants. Yeah. Or I'm going to say a big, large man's pants because it does seem like Trump has pretty big pants. I'd say, would you say Trump has about a 52 waist? I'm just going to throw it out there. Let's take a look and measure his, his girth. Look at that girth. 52 waist right there. That's what I say. You notice there's nothing showing that, like nudity. Yeah, there, we're not showing any nudity at all. This is totally safe and sane. <laughs> well, China has been stockpiling oil, but China has a lot of other issues that they have to deal with. Feeding 1.3 billion people for one. I'm not that worried because a trade war with China won't impact me that much. I don't buy anything from Walmart except for cat food and maybe a uh, turtle wax. Yeah, I buy turtle wax there. And that's not made in China. John Uncaged is with Trump. He thinks that we don't need to worry about China. A lot of you people are going to sit, stand with Trump until the economy around you collapses. Now, as I said before, the stock market has taken a big drop dive. The Dow Jones average has dropped 623 points today. A uh, market decline like this is indicative of Trump's an ongoing trade war with China. Again, this is a topsy-turvy uh, time we're in, and stock market prices are going to go up and down, and people are going to win and lose. And whenever this happens, this volatility leads to people losing money in their 401ks because the 401ks rely on stability. So the more volatile the market is, despite its pr presence and uh, where it is in numbers, it still can create more problems for the 401ks, which are the biggest, most important funds, I should say, to uh, people who are investing. But they don't comprise the blind share of the money that's out there. Oh, there's money market counts, uh, $26 trillion that are unsecured with no, no risk prevention whatsoever. So anything can happen. And if a trade war is what Donald Trump wants, and he said, oh, we could easily win a trade war, that man is going to learn to pay the price when election time comes around in 2020, because we're not going to be able to win an election without new ideas, incredibly new ways of getting production up. I believe the best way to get our production up is through agriculture. And I'm going to give a big, huge round of applause for our farmers who are now $1.3 million in debt per farmer for hanging in there. A lot of you people want to cut and run and sell your farms to big agribusiness. When I become president, <clears throat> we will support the organic food production and farmers, small farmers will get their, their strength back and their feet under them again. Not only will we give you loan support, uh, we'll underwrite the loans you currently have and drop your interest rate to 2%. Trump just handed them $12 billion to cover the sorghum problem as well as the soybean problem. 
the China government has cut back shipments of sorghum and and any kind of soybean product, which is a big, big damaging thing because a lot of farmers put their efforts in the soybeans, sorghum and corn. We'll also be migrating away from the GMO corn, which is not as saleable as the organic heirloom corn. And we'll try to repenetrate our cornfields with more uh, natural corn products. That's something I want to make a big transition to. I call it the re of America. And it's kind of a cool idea. Getting our farmers back on track is a good way to get our country rolling again. Because remember, we were the breadbasket of the world and we still can be. Okay, so we have many ideas that are very cutting edge for America. I address healthcare problems with my mobile medical unit, which Trump never deployed. He tried to steal my idea during the election and he never built these. This is the central core of lower cost medical care for all of us. Reaggregation to help our farmers. We're building an infrastructure bank offering 2% loans to underwrite some of our failed institutions loans, like our uh, currently our student loan problems. FAFSA are way out of control, $1.3 trillion in outstanding FAFSA debt. We'll be right underwriting that with the infrastructure bank and getting all of your FAFSA loans to a fixed 2% interest rate, meaning your money is going directly back toward your loan. You won't be paying in balloon interest payments and never getting any anything toward the principal. And uh, don't forget the ultimate $500 per month for all U.S. adult citizens if Andrew Yang gets the nomination for the Democrats, I'll bump it to 1111. Because this is my original idea for a basic income. We published it in our book, Hybrid Capitalism. I will bump it to 1111 a month. I don't want to because our country really can't afford that, but we'll kick it off and we'll get that number out there if Andrew Yang wins the nomination. And I will honor that. We're trying to break down the two party corrupt system that we have. The only way to do that is to offer what they're offering and better. If I have to pull from the military industrial complex, I will to fund this. Yeah, bacon's pretty good. I mean, I don't understand why de Blasio has outlawed hot dogs in New York. I mean, that's stupid. You're going to kill business. Do you have any idea how many people have hot dog stands in New York making their money? Yeah, now they're left out in the lurch selling, uh, you know, uh, meatless, uh, genetically modified soybean burgers. Hot dog stands in New York City are suffering. Mm, yep. Here's an article at Snopes. Did New York City ban hot dogs? Let's take a look. I want to find this out. And I'm going to rely on Snopes for this one. The answer is mostly false. They announced a Green New Deal in April of 2019 that would reduce the amount of processed meat purchased by the government-run facilities such as hospitals, schools, and correctional facilities. So New York City did not ban hot dogs outright, okay? So if you still want to go to New York, you can get a hot dog on the street. Now, that, that just made my night. You know what I'm talking about? Anyway, I was just outside of New York City a few weeks ago driving and I said, you know, sir, we're not going into New York City. No way. I'm not driving through that hell hole. Uh, whether I'm going to eat a, New a hot dog or not. Yeah, Nathan's famous hot dog stand in Coney Island. Thank you. But they got great food there. I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad city. I'm just saying it's a hell hole when it comes to driving. So many people in New York City sell hot dogs, yeah. So I guess de Blasio is only banning it at government institutions. I don't know what his deal is, but they save a lot of money on hot dogs. If he doesn't want to in, in allow processed meat in his institutions, uh, that's great. But the guy embraces all the pizza joints, and he's now making a big uh, big effort to get pizza one pizza parlor back on track in New York City. He's actually going to bail them out, he's saying. Their tax burden was so high. I mean, being pro-pizza and anti-hot dog, isn't that hypocritical? I mean, seriously. Pro-GMO pizza, but against processed meat? I mean, come on. This is the problem with the Democrats. 
They don't even address the problems of GMOs. I do. Up, up, and away, my beautiful, my beautiful. Huh. Well, I'll be darned. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. Well, I guess we'll have another breakdown in our show because I have another stop point on my XSplit program. Okay, we'll splice this with the next one and we'll keep splicing these until we get it right. I'll be right back, folks. <laughs> 